Hello, Poké Collector, Poké Investor. Welcome again to another episode of Mini Pokémon. My name is Half from MiniPokémon.com, and today we'll be analyzing the most hyped set in a long time in Pokémon trading card history. You bet, we're talking about Hidden Fates. All right, Hidden Fates. Yeah, I needed to record this video. I couldn't wait any longer. Usually I wait until it's daylight, we have more light. But I decided just to jump in and record this video for all of you because Hidden Fate is out and it's out strong. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section if you're actually interested in Hidden Fates or crazy about Hidden Fates because it seems that everyone is just crazy about Hidden Fates. Ow, I'm psyched, okay. I mean, it feels like there's multiple storms coming and people are just going through Target, Walmart, MiniPokemon.com, just buying all the things that has a hidden fate on it. Like people going with their carts and just dumping everything in, like if the storm was coming. I need it! And I love the enthusiasm, and I love that people are loving this set. There's a lot of things to love in this set. We have shiny Pokemon, we have limited release so far, and that's a big disclaimer, so far because we don't know if it's going to be an actual limited release or not. Um, we have Charizard, we have beloved Pokemon in the whole set, we have full art trainers, we have like Cynthia, right? We have crazy cards, the cards are you probably, as you are probably aware, are out of rotation, which means that those cards cannot be used in decks. That means the whole set itself is more appealing towards collectors. So kudos to Pokemon Company for doing this, appealing for the collector space. But I think we need to think about it in more cold mind, analyze it more deeper, and try to figure it out if it's actually worth or not investing in hidden fates. <clears throat> now, when we say investing, I don't mean investing. I mean speculating at this point, right? And. Uh, I'm going to be shooting a video that talks about the speculation versus investing versus flipping, etc. And, and how each role is good for the Pokemon hobby, collecting hobby. Uh, but today, uh, I'm referring as speculating because we don't know how good, how bad, or how ugly uh, Hidden Fates is going to be. Yes, we have history that we can refer in terms of shiny Pokemon usually do very well. We have Neo Destiny, we have Shiny Legends. Usually those sets are very, very popular. But, but the hype, the craziness that I'm seeing around Hidden Fates, it's something that I haven't seen in a long time uh, in the Pokemon TCG. Uh, it's people are raving for this set and we need to be careful because we're speculating a lot. People are assuming that this is going to become a big thing in the future. And I'm not saying it's not going to become a big thing, but I don't have the data that will back it up. Now, when we're investing in modern Pokemon products, the biggest concern is that it's actual modern Pokemon products. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Pokemon Company has a history of reprinting sets without caring about the collector's side. If there's demand, they will just print more. And yes, my distributor level, um, it's limited quantities. They have limited the quantities for every single person that are buying on the distributor distribution level. But that doesn't mean that in the, th in, the, in the boxes that are coming up for Hidden Fates, there will not be more printing, right? <clears throat> we have the teens that are actually releasing or released just the past couple of days we have another couple of boxes that are coming out in the future. So more and more and more product is being printed on Hidden Fates. And I can bet you that if the pin boxes were limited, the teams are going to be less limited. The next box is going to be massive printed and the one after is going to be insane. I'm not saying it's going to be on the level of evolutions that we still see packs up to today or maybe Steam Siege that was that took forever to not have packs in any promo boxes but I think Hidden Fates it's going to be more and more printed because it's generating a lot of money. So we need to be careful on that aspect. The second thing that I want to talk about and I think that we also need to be careful is maybe a lot of people are just trying to hunt that Charizard and yes you bet we're talking about the hot, hot Charizard Shiny GX. It's a beautiful card. 
I don't have anything against that shiny GX. I'm looking one myself as a collector. Uh, but if we're talking about actually investing on a shiny Charizard, I don't think it's the right time to actually buy one. And the reason why I'm saying this is because usually when there's hype, the prices go up, right? It's normal. When, when we have a popular card, there's a lot of demand, right? So price go up because there's not enough cards for the demand that, that, that it's out there. So it's normal that that is going to spike up. Now, what I've usually seen in all the popular cards that come out there in Modern, you see this huge spike and then this drop right after, right? We saw that in the Reshiram and Charizard GX. It went up all the way to almost $400, $450. Now you can find one for $170, $180, $200, right? So it's a 50% drop in just, what, some months? So I think Hidden Fates it's kind of in a small bubble. Yes, I'm saying the word bubble. And uh, a lot of people are just investing too much money in it when, when Pokemon Company comes back with more and more product and that spike of prices are not longer going up because people are seeing product out there in Target, Walmart, uh, places that are not putting the prices up. Then the, the flipper market is going to slow down and we'll see that kind of trend going back backwards down again. So that, that's going to happen. I think it's going to happen and it's going to crash hard. So, uh, and if it happens, you heard it here in Mini Pokemon. And if it does not happen, then I will be the first one to admit that I was wrong. But I'm, I'm predicting that around January, February, the Hidden Fates probably will slow down and that will be probably the time to start investing in it. Now, uh, that's for cards. When we're talking about uh, sealed product, by all means, if you find it on a minimum suggested retail price, go and buy it. Keep it sealed. I think it's going to keep their, uh, their value and they're going to keep growing over time. We have a limited release, hopefully, uh, of those boxes specifically. And uh, people are going to like the shinies anyway. The fact that there's a, a card that you want to look for, which is that shiny Charizard card, makes this set very valuable in a, in, in a sealed collection. And uh, as you probably know, and if you don't, Hidden Fates, you cannot find booster boxes, which increases the demand that this will have in the future. So that's, that's my take on it. I think Hidden Fates, you will probably uh, be safe if you buy them on the actual retail price. If you overpay, I will strongly suggest not to do so. Try to find the prices that are good, keep them sealed, and uh, that will probably be giving you the best return on your investment. Now, it's a lot of speculation. This is a disclaimer right here. It's a, it's a speculation. I don't know if it's going to grow or not. Based on historical data of Shining Legends and all of that, it will and all of those sets that were limited, it will have some growth, but it will not grow as fast as we can see um, in, in, in vintage products at this present time. And the reason why vintage products are growing so fast is because they are limited, right? We don't have print runs anymore. We don't have more product. Every time someone opens a pack, opens a box, is less product out there in the market, and that's why the prices go up. Well, in today's, we still have Hidden Fate coming. So if you're pay overpaying for a product that's coming out already, it, it, it's a terrible mistake. So don't land on the hype. Try to get those pre-orders in place. Try to find places that will not sell you in above uh, minimum suggested retail price uh, or try to find places that are not bumping the price too much because uh, I think it's just the hype coming in. Anyway. So, <clears throat> the last topic I wanted to talk today, it's about that Charizard. And you bet we need to talk about the Charizard and how, from how much it, it sold. Uh, for people that are unaware, if you're unaware, uh, recently a Charizard, Chinese Charizard sold for $10,100 on eBay. And yes, we don't know the whole history. And yes, so there might be people that actually were bidding, f were putting fake bids to bump up that price. But I, I have to tell, two sides of the story. Number one, I like the idea that a modern card sold for that much. I would have never paid that much for a card that is modern and uh, it's just released. Maybe if it's a modern, a special promo, I will pay more money, but this is not a promo that it's in limited release. 
uh, Charizards will keep coming. And the fact that a, a Charizard got a BGS 10 Black Label, which is the best grade, with, with just two weeks of release means that the product is in great quality, so we'll probably see more and more of those cards popping up on the market. Now, it's a very speculative market. I, as I said before, we're in a speculation here and a lot of people are investing a lot of money. So, number one, I like that, uh, that that card generated buzz because it brings more people to the hobby, hopefully, and that's great for the market. Uh, more visibility. Number two, it bumps up kind of hidden fates. Uh, so more hype means that the set in the future, maybe will people uh, remember all this hype and will like to have uh, sealed boxes in the future of this of the set. So that that's good because it has that historical data. What is bad? It's that it's in a speculative market, and the person that actually bought that ten thousand and a hundred dollar card, uh, I think they they did a mistake, and I cannot find it words to explain why, except for maybe four things. Number one, either that person is multimillionaire and doesn't care about the money itself and that he or she just wanted that card so heavily without thinking about the price or the return of investment in the future. Number two is uh, money laundering, <laughs> right? Someone bought that card just to launder money. Um, number three is that uh, that person basically thinks, and that's the more more scary part, is that that person thinks that this will become the next first edition based Charizard or the next shining Charizard or the next uh, first edition based Mewtwo or something big that will eventually return a lot of investment. And that's what the biggest concern here is, where we're dealing in a speculative market of someone that thinks that this will be a, return, a huge return of investment just like Vintage does today. It's what is scary. You need to be smart. You need to look at the data, you need to analyze the data, and that's why this channel exists. So hopefully I'll give you all the information that you need to make those better decisions. But in my perspective, that card was a super overpay, and any person that buys a Charizard today are overpaying because we don't know the historical data. We don't know how much that card is actually worth. There's no way to know. We don't know how much, how many are out there we don't know, we don't have price comparisons. The only comparison we have right now is that $10,100 card. But I bet you that if we wait a little longer, we'll see less and less expensive cards that are PSA 10, BGS 10, you name it. Because more Charizards are coming. I can bet you that, and that's for sure. <clears throat> but anyway, that's everything I have for today. I hope you got something out of this video, that's my rant about hidden fates. In conclusion, I will just, if, I'm, if I were to invest, I will invest in on sealed product. I will just keep it sealed. I will not overpay for it today. I will just, I will just buy a product that it's on a minimum suggested retail price, maybe a little bit up, but not too much. Uh, I will keep it sealed. I will never buy a uh, single shiny cards right now, especially the overhyped ones like Charizard, Cynthia, those cards I will just wait until the market settles a little bit and then I will make the decision whether or not I want to buy it um, and be very be very skeptical about the speculative market don't go into the hype get down from the hype train see it from the from the distance the train looks beautiful but you don't need to ride it okay you can't just be outside looking at that train making wiser decisions buying cards, buying sealed product, saving it, and uh, and if you really want just to collect it, then by all means, go and buy it, open it, enjoy it, but you don't need to, to drive in that hype train because you're just going to be overpaying and maybe you will be regretting in the future. Be careful out there. <laughs> it's a wild, wild west right now. Uh, I just want to drop this, uh, tell you about uh, Hidden Fates, why I think you should relax, invest consciously but be smart about it and uh, that charizard will come if you're a charizard collector but just wait it out my recommendation is wait it out it's going to crash and uh you will be able to buy it for less than it is today today it goes for around 700 800 i've seen on ebay going for that raw um 
uh, PSA 10, I'm assuming they're going to be asking for around $2,000. Uh, there's a BGS 10 gold right now going for almost $3,000 on eBay. Um, so it's a very hot market. Uh, my recommendation is to stay out of it. All right, so if you haven't checked out the other video that I posted, I go over on how to check Pokemon prices. And uh, I promised that the next one was going to be liquidity, but I'm going to be alternating or popping up videos from time to time of opening product or me ranting about something. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll keep that series as well. So the next one of that, of that series is liquidity. Hopefully you'll enjoy it as well. And uh, yeah, if you haven't done so, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit that notification bell because we have more content coming. Hope you enjoy it. If you didn't like it, let me know in the comment section as well because I want to improve this channel and it's up to you to make it better or worse. So let me know and until next time, gotta collect them all.